we will wait just a moment as Zoom lets our friends in the room, but welcome today. My name is Josie Badger, and I am the director of the National Raise Center. Raise works to make sure that parent centers across the country are able to serve youth with disabilities during transition and their families. We work alongside RSA and the eight RSA parent centers, which are throughout the whole country. Um, we are thrilled to be here with you today talking about this PATF family guide. And we will be really getting a sneak peek at this guide because it is still being finalized. Um, you all will receive access to the actual um, initial guide, but then there will be another component that is the full 508 compliant version in the near future. Um, but at this moment, um, I want to first thank PUTF um, for being a part and pulling everyone together today. Um, and we also have friends from the Department of Banking and Securities here today. Um, so at this moment, I'm going to turn it over to Miriam and next slide. Yeah, we need the next slide. Karen, if you can pass it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Josie. And my name is Miriam Aliso. I am also from the National Race Center. And it's my pleasure for me to be here. Um, and we'll um, show you how to use the Zoom features that we have available. And so for the closed captioning, we have um, and a feature up activated it's uh, if you click on the cc you will see the closed caption showing up and uh, we also have a q and a to ask questions to the presenters use it and if you have any uh, questions regarding the um, technical issues please use the chat box um, we have interpretation to spanish right now live para acceder al canal en español Van a ver en la banda o cinta negra un globo que indica interpretación, interpretation. Hagan clic allí, luego seleccionan español y oprimen donde dice mute original audio. Esto último filtra completamente la señal en inglés para que puedan escuchar con claridad a nuestro intérprete de hoy, Luis. And we also have American Sign Language. We have Dina with us today. And uh, uh, to pin the interpreter, even though we have pinned it for you, hover over the, the video of the, of when you see the three dots, you can um, click pin. And in that way, um, Dina is going to be pinned for you. Okay, next slide. All right, and I think I am on. Thank you, Miriam, for for and Josie for inviting us. We have something really exciting to show all the people who are in attendance, and it's our all our brand new PATF family guide. I'm Karen Hassett. I'm the financial education director at Pennsylvania Assistive Technology Foundation. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But we also have two wonderful guest speakers besides myself, and I'm going to ask them to uh, to put their put their uh, video on. The first speaker I want to introduce is Becky McDicken. So Becky, if you could put your speaker on, that would be or your video on, that would be helpful. I believe it's on. So there you go. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, my name is Becky McDicken with the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities. It has been a privilege and an honor to work on the uh, task force creating this um, family guide. Um, I've been with the Department of Banking and Securities for 17 years now. 
uh, the bulk of which has been doing financial education, much of which is to the community um, of, with disabilities. So um, I've also served on the governor's advisory committee for people with disabilities. And why? Because I have a son who is on the autism spectrum. So I am also a parent um, and I will stop talking for now. You'll hear more from me as we move forward. Thank you, Becky. And then our other speaker today will be Susan Tackoff. And Susan, if you could put your video on. Thank you, Karen. So I'm Susan Tackoff, uh, recently retired um, from Pennsylvania Assistive Technology Foundation, PATF. I was the CEO and then I went right into being the Chief Innovation Officer and Ben Loudermilk is PATF's uh, CEO now. But for this presentation, what um, is my passion is financial education. And I come from it by being a parent. So I also, um, like Becky, have a professional interest as well as a personal interest. I have a 41-year-old adult son who has cerebral palsy. And we had to learn kind of the rough way of how to introduce financial education so that he could live independently. So Karen, back to you. Thank you, Susan. And I, as I said, I'm Karen Hassett. I am financial education director at Pennsylvania Assistive Technology. I am the, um, I have a master's degree in education. I'm actually a certified educator and have been doing education for well over 20 years. And I came to financial education because I decided to join the the corporate world. And that was the job I was given and fell in love with it. And I also think it's, I have three children and it's very important to teach our children about money and, and how to how to do money, really. So I'm very excited that we have this family guide. And before we go on, I just want to point out some of these images that you see on our screen. First of all, you're going to see a young man, and I'm thinking the left-hand side of the screen, he's using his, his debit card at an ATM, and actually he's at a co on a college campus. He just graduated this May, so that's very exciting, and his mother is also um, on our advisory committee, which we'll talk about in a minute. The next image uh, up on the top to your right is a young lady who's stacking coins in uh, in like amounts, really important for our kids to learn how to use real currency and understand what the denominations are. And then next to her is a young gentleman, a young boy in a green sweatshirt. He's doing one of his chores, which is feeding, which is filling up a dog bowl uh, with water. And um, actually the dog is enjoying that water underneath him. He's at the picture underneath and I am an animal person. So I hope you will not mind that I included the uh, subject of one of our chores. And next to that on the right hand side is a mother and her young son and they're frosting cupcakes. And that is actually one of the lessons or one of the teachable moments in our, in our family guide that we're gonna talk about in a minute. And it's teaching how the really what we call in the biz, in the financial education delayed gratific gratification it's teaching him that you have to wait you can't always have things immediately so and and what better way to teach that than making cupcakes having to wait for them having to wait for them to cool before you frost them and then the best part is the gratification eating the cupcakes and they did look yummy if i say so myself and then that last picture bottom to the left is a mother again and her young son. And he is actually doing a presentation to his mom why he should be able to buy an iPhone with his own money. So um, so so let's get started. And I'm going to tell I'm going to go through these fast because. I want to get to the meat of this program, which is our family guide. Again, I work for Pennsylvania Assistive Technology Foundation. We are a, a statewide organization in the state of Pennsylvania. We're based in King of Prussia. 
the majority of our board and staff are individuals with disabilities or immediate or they have immediate family members who have disabilities. We are what is called a community development financial institution or a CDFI. We are a consumer lender and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And we are part of Pennsylvania's alternative financing program. It was originally uh, authorized by the Federal Assistive Technology Act. And um, there are programs in other states and territories as well. And at PATF, we help Pennsylvanians of all ages, income levels, disabilities, health conditions, communities, and cultural backgrounds. I would like to put a caveat in there, our financial education publications, the Family Guide being one of them, and you're going to see the other ones in a minute, they are very general in nature. There is a little bit of information about Pennsylvania, but the topics and the lessons are universal. So not to worry, this Family Guide, if you're living in New Jersey, Delaware, New York, this will be applicable to you as well, as well as our other financial education products. Um, what, what we do is we provide information and assistance so individuals can call us and we can help direct them to where they need to go. We also provide funding for assistive technology and that is in the form of loans. And I'll, I'll talk very briefly about those in the next slide. And then of course we provide financial education. We are very passionate about that. I love the best part is that we provide this education and we provide a way for individuals to practice it by using uh, taking out loans and, and building their credit. We have two education, uh, let me back that up. We have two mini loan programs. One is our mini loan program, and those are for loans $100 to $7,000. They are 0% interest. There are no fees. And the max repayment period is four years or 48 months. And again, these would be loans for assistive technology. So things like a hearing aid, maybe a reader, uh, well, you name it. It could be also a um, it could be a ramp into a house or making a house safe for an individual who, um, who is a wheelchair user. And for our for bigger items, and those would be for loans above 7,000, we have a low interest program. And that would be for car mod modifications or maybe a little bit more um, a modification, you know, bigger project, home projects, modifying a, a home. And um, our, the interest rate on that program is 3.75%. Again, there are no fees. And we, there are non-guaranteed loans. We will do up to $60,000 and guaranteed, and that's where PATF will guarantee um, the loan. And that would be up to 35,000. Again, you can call us and, and, and talk to our, our information people, and they will help you navigate this with, um, with ease, for sure. So I'm going to, I told you we also have some other financial education products. Sense and Sensibility is our very first education uh, financial education product. And that is a sense of sensibility, a guide to money management. It's, it's made for the learner and they have, it really has very plain English, very pragmatic, very realistic approaches to managing your money. And it goes from budgeting, which we don't use that word. We use a word called money mapping uh, to all the way to transitioning. What are some of the things that you need to have in place to, you know, or your child needs to have a place to transition from secondary ed supports. The other, um, I, the, you'll see there are actually three images. So that first image is sense and sensibility. The middle one has the words investing for your future. We also have written a new chapter, which we will be adding to Sense and Sensibility about investing. And one of the reasons why we, we included this is because the PA ABLE program has 
options to invest money. And investing certainly is one of the tried and true ways to create or to make more money, to create wealth. And, um, and right now, uh, we, in, for PA Able, we know that there's about half of, half of the money is not invested. It's just in a regular checking account. So we thought it would be important for individuals to understand some of the basics of investing. And we're at, we added, we will be adding that to our next edition to Sense and Sensibility, which may be coming out in this fall. And then that last yellow cover is the cover of our educator companion guide. And that is for in anybody who's going to be teaching financial education. It aligns exactly with sense and sensibility. And there are there are definitions, there's background information, activities, and right now the um the sense and sensibility is available in Spanish. The sense and sensibility educator companion is not. And you can see those QR codes. You'll be getting a copy of this presentation. You can just hover over those with your phone camera and it'll take you right to the site with all of our education materials. And then lastly, uh, our last bullet is our website that is a companion to our sense and sensibility, studymoney.us. It's very engaging, it's interactive, there are activities on that site that you can fill in online. You can save a, a, a PDF document and it's fillable, or you can print it and you can just handwrite your answers into the activities. The nice thing about our online version is that it also calculates uh, calculates for you. So if you're doing something like a money map where you're calculating your expenses and your income, it actually will do that right on the um, on the activity for you. And these resources are all free. You just have to reach out to us and I can put in chat our, um, our I'm actually going to ask, maybe I can, I'll do that. Susan, is, I'm going to I'm going to ask Susan to come back on and she's going to introduce our family companion. And while she's doing that, I'm going to put our, our uh, website in the, in the chat as well. So Susan, take it away. I'm going to shut off my mic and my. Thank you. So the next uh, book or publication in this series is this family guide. And so it mirrors some of the lessons that we've put in with Sense and Sensibility and the Investing It for My Future. So I really want to do another shout out to Investing for My Future. Um, all states uh, pretty much have access to an, the families and people with disabilities um, have access to an ABLE program. And Pennsylvania is one of 17 or 18 states that are in a collaborative. Other states have um, are standalone programs or have another collaborative. So what we've heard is that, what do you mean by investing? Um, how do we understand what those six or seven options are? So that's what we put in this in, in that chapter. And then in the family companion, uh, guide, which you will see the cover right here, we reference our other publications. So if you have one publication, you'll be able to click on and, and get a free copy of all the others. So we put the family companion um, guide together because we as families have heard over and over again, well, where do we start? And we want to start at the very beginning when your children are really young. So this guide centers on very young children until about middle school. And that's because then it, you can take over depending on your child. You can start with Sense and Sensibility, a guide to money management, or you can just kind of work with this family guide depending on your child's ability and interest um, to about middle school. This guide right now is in the process of being made 508 fully accessible and will be uploaded to PATF's website probably by the end of next week. Um, there's just a timing issue. Next, please. 
So who helped us put together this guide? Um, essentially, it's composed, the advisory committee is built of parents of children. All of us have children with disabilities. So we wanted lived experience, professional experience, and they help guide us. So we, for example, started off thinking that this guide would be 16 pages. And Karen can tell you the final count, but I think it's like 47 pages. Everybody has diverse experience. So there are seven parents, um, but many of us wore different hats. So as Becky will tell you in a minute, you know, she's a parent, but she also worked in, in banking and securities. And she used to be in Pennsylvania's Office of Financial Education. Many of us have nonprofit experience. Uh, one parent, uh, Kathy Brill, helped run the National Parent to Parent. So many of you know her. Many of us are parts of advisory uh, groups. So we pulled together all of our experiences to help guide the structure of this guide. We met one, at least once a month from September through May, and we helped provide uh, comments to the guide, editing experience in between those uh, monthly meetings. Uh, Becky, did I leave anything out? Did you want to say anything about your role on the advisory committee? Of course, I can't find my mouse. <laughs> I should be popping back up. Um, I just, I was, again, glad to be asked to do this. I've been in the banking and securities department for 17 years, part of which was with the Office of Financial Education. And as a parent, my son actually just graduated from high school, um, although he will be continuing with, with some transition uh, services. Uh, but just recognizing the importance of all of this that we're putting together for other parents who are coming you know, after us, um, who've gone before and have learned um, it's it's been just a tremendous experience but i think so many families are going to find this guide very helpful in meeting the needs of their child and we know there there's a vast array of differences out there in the community so um, just again glad to be a part of it right and and i guess the the last thing and then i'll kick it back over to karen the reason we're going into this type of detail is to kind of mentor others of you who are on this call or will listen to this tape that you too can pull together uh, a funding guide, a financial education guide, any kind of a guide through the that you may need and who should be your players so that you know you've got an authentic experience and you learn from experience so that you can build something better. Uh, Karen, did you want to um, talk about how we, you know, how we built those principles? Yeah. It, yes. And I, and I will never disagree with Susan, but when she said it was going to be 16 pages, I really thought, hmm, I'm not 100% sure that that's going to really happen, especially because at the time we were thinking we were going to take the the topic up through high school and but what we did is this this is just I, I kind of peeking behind the curtain if you if you don't mind we wanted to hear from all the voices of our parent advisory committee and if you noticed on the prior slide we had people from banking and from all different sorts of non-profits so our committee provided lived experience as well as professional. And we just threw the ideas up against the wall. The wall. I'm a real advocate of brainstorming. We wanted just to get everybody's thoughts. And then what we did is we just, we condensed them and honed them down to the essential topics, which I will show you in a minute. And, um, and also we included a foreword that was written by one of our advisory committees. So it's a parent speaking to the parents or users of this guide. And, um, and I am also very visual, so I really needed to do this. Uh, I needed to put this up there because there were so many good ideas. And, and then once we, once we did that, um, we really thought it was important for us to to have a vision statement. And Susan, I know you're you're I see you're you're up there. So why don't you talk about that for a minute? Oh, 
muted. Yes. We wanted to be really clear about why we were doing it, what were the values, and then how to help make sure that our guide was as easy to follow as possible. So our value statement was really, we are parents talking to other and who are also professionals, some of us, but we really wanted to help teach our children about money management. And the real core value statement is that last sentence. Our goal is for our children to live in a world where they will have equal access to financial services and products offered by financial institutions. In other words, we want our children to be fully included in society. And then we also, and in our guide, you will see when you download a copy that this is a note to parents. It's like our vision statement. And then to help organize our guide, we put, and you'll see this in orange, this is a guide for teaching our children about money. And by the way, as you all know, money is value laden, right? So it includes six fundamental financial topics, money basics, earning, spending, saving, borrowing, protecting against identity theft, as well as to advocate for your child's financial education through their individual education program. So we're very concrete in this book. We're not just talking in theory, like talk about your child about money, but we're giving you examples. And um, I will come back on at the end to talk to you about how we did this in an IEP. So Karen, take it away. Thank you, Susan. So what I'm going to do, and, and if you do have a question, please put it in the Q&A. And, and we'll answer all your questions at the end, but I'm just going to give you a sneak peek into the guide itself and, and hopefully help you understand like what our intent was with, um, with this guide and, and what it's in, what the structure is of the guide. So, as I said, we really wanted to have, include a forward where there is a parent speaking directly to the users of this guide. And this parent spoke of their money beliefs and their own experiences. And as it was written by one of our committee members, her name was Arlacia, and she has two sons with autism. In fact, on this slide, you could, this is an image of one of her sons who he has his cash out, his calculator, his wallet, and he is using his calculator to add up what money he has. And I love this quote, and I hope you will bear with me for reading the slide, but I just think this quote, it really speaks to me. And it, it really sums up actually my belief about why I do financial education. And that is basically money is not just about money. It's about the freedom to choose. It may not be unlimited resource, and we all know that it isn't, but at least you have opportunities to make and control choices that affect you now and or, or, and or in the future. And also it speaks to the purpose of this guide or to our thinking or our motivation behind putting this guide together is we want families to be forward looking, recognizing that parents have a lot on their plates, especially early on. In, and in the young years, you're just trying to get the schools and to the services that your child needs. And, um, and this, you know, them graduating high school is probably the least of your, your, uh, least of your thoughts when they're in first or second grade or even kindergarten or younger. But this goal is to, again, to be forward looking, to think about the future. And here is, here is the list of topics. Again, that's the front cover of our guide. And you can see on that front cover, there's a mom and her son. They're just using goldfish to, to count because we numeracy is important. Counting is important. Making our children or having our children be comfortable with that. And those are the topics that Susan talked about. Again, the essential money topics. This is one of the things of our collective experiences of being in this business, 
for as long as we have. These are the most important topics that we um, that we want our children to learn about. And you're going to see as I go through how we, we go about doing that. So all the financial ed topics have the sim have a similar structure. There's a, there's a bit of background information. We also have conversation starters because talking to our children about these topics is never easy. We have teachable moments and we also include suggested books that you can read with your child, read to your child or your child can read to you however you want to do it as well as resources that are available uh, to you to supplement whatever, or to parents to supplement the, uh, the particular topic. And of course, we have parent stories and tips that are sprinkled throughout the, this guide. Again, giving, helping other families get ideas about how they can incorporate financial education in their everyday activities. In fact, that is what teachable moments are, is there our way of bringing money fundamentals to life in a way that's really simple to incorporate in your in day-to-day -day life. And you're going to see on that right-hand side, we have icons that, um, that are associated with these teachable moments. And if you bear with me for a minute, I'm just going to explain to you what those are. The first one you're going to see is a yellow circle with an acorn in the in the middle of it, an acorn um, in white, and that teachable moment is just an activity that is introducing a concept. The next one up is a green, and it's called it's the uh, it's the seed, and or that is where it's just starting to grow. It's starting to germinate, and that's a green circle, and I'm. I'm sorry, that's a sprout. That's what we call it. And that represents just the idea is in the concept are starting to germinate, to take hold. The next circle is blue and that's called, we call that a seedling. And that represents the concept being used in more complex situations. So these teachable moments would have, a, you know, would be a little bit more complex. And then the last one is, is the tree, that this is the fully grown version of the seed. And <clears throat> that's in that orangey red circle. And that again represents being able to use the concept independently with some support. The idea here is we are not pres prescribing when or what age you should use these teachable moments. We are just simply saying, this is the way the chi your child is gonna grasp this concept. And if it doesn't work, if it doesn't click right away with the child, then we in the guide suggest parents just set it aside and revisit it at a later date. So our first chapter is all about money. And, and we actually talk about the purpose of money in this, in this chapter. Like, why do we have money? Why don't we just trade things? In fact, one of the things is um, the, one of the, que the questions could be, uh, one of our questions in this, this chapter is, would you trade your favorite toy for a piece of broccoli? And in that question, we also give you some tips and some suggested responses. But this is, on this slide, I'm just showing you an example of one of our teachable moments, those things that we, that can be incorporated in everyday life. And you see that it's, um, it's that again, it's being used in a more complex situation, but it's talking about using money and taking your child to the store and talking to them about that plastic card that you use, that debit card, that that has no value unless you have money in your account. And that is a very complex concept. It's one that I found in my years of doing this that some adults struggle with that, that, that pla you really do need to have money in your account when you're using your debit card. And then of course, on the other side, you see two young gentlemen who are in the store shopping. Our next chapter is earning or our next topic. And we, again, will include in there um, different types of income, uh, background information. And we also in this, and we'll include teachable moments like this, 
suggested reading. There are some great activities that you can, that parents can go to. Uh, there, they, there are websites and if they use the digital version, they can just simply click on the link and go right to that site. This is an example of our Sprout. So the concept has been introduced and now we're going to bring in a little bit more information and have the child try to try to take that information and use it in their own activity. And this would be just a simple question to your child. Imagine if you had a gift of $20 or you could even use it when your child gets a gift of $20 and ask them what they want to do with that money. Do they want to save it? Do they want to share it? Do they want to spend it all? And encourage them to talk about this. This brings in the, the, um, the notion of being mindful when you spend your money, actually stretching that dollar. So it's doing three jobs instead of one. And when I say three jobs, I mean, it can be used the job of saving. It can be used for spending and also could be used for something else like sharing um, or even even long-term savings. And the other thing we want, we point out in this book, and this is a theme throughout the book, that parents should approach this as um, without judgment of what their child is thinking. You know, let them express their ideas and then talk to them about the pros and cons of those ideas. And this way you provide a safe space for your children to make financial decisions. And maybe you can even think about, I know I can as a parent, as a, as a young child, thinking about some of the instances when I had to make financial decisions and, and I wasn't quite so co confident in those. And then our next chapter is spending because you know what? Money is meant to be spent and we need to have joy in our life. And this is an example of our parent story. You, you see there's a young gentleman who's a wheelchair user. He's in the clothing section of a department store. And this parent story is, is, a, an, is a real experience that one of our advisory committee members had with their child. Um, and I, I think of this as sort of the birds of a feather. You know, it's nice to know that we're not alone in these in these situations, um, especially as a parent, because I think a lot of times as parents, we second guess ourselves. So this is an example of a, a young gentleman who went to the store to buy a warm coat and was and would chose to buy the coat that had the logo of his favorite basketball team. That coat cost $150. He could have bought an, ex an exact uh, replica of that coat warm and would serve the purpose, but it didn't have the logo. And he could have spent $75 and had money left over to either buy a ticket to the game or go to lunch with his friends or do both. This brings in the, the, um, the theme of opportunity cost, that when we spend our money, we do give up other things. However, the point here is there is no judgment. This coat brought him immense joy. And sometimes that's that's good enough right just but that your but your child needs to understand that there are opportunity costs associated with that and becky did you want to say something i saw you pop in well i think i'm coming up that's why yes you are and <laughs> becky's coming up for the next um the next uh, chapter or topic which is savings well, the one other thing I was going to mention, too, before I get to the slide, is that when I served on Governor Wolf's Committee for um, People with Disabilities, there were so many different subgroups within that committee, and they were talking about finding jobs. They were talking about benefits. They were talking about where they were going to live, transportation. What I kept screaming from the rooftop was about the fact money plays a role in every one of those decisions, no matter what someone's disability is. So um, I was always preaching you know, the gospel of financial education. And again, this guide is, is really trying to give some core concepts that we can start young and keep building those concepts and growing those concepts. So 
um, just absolutely, again, critical to be to be teaching our kids about these topics. Now, saving, that's me because I'm the banking lady, right? I have worked for banking and securities now for 17 years. And obviously in my line of work, we are always encouraging people to be banked. Um, we have gone into this parent tip at a much uh, a more broad level to give the concept some air. Um, and we said the, the way to introduce the concept of saving is even just to say shutting off the lights and the water while brushing your teeth is gonna save water and energy and money because that you know electricity usage and the water equates to money we obviously encourage people to get banked and when i say that i mean banks and credit unions um, i want to make sure we give equal airtime to both of those financial institutions um, there are you know great institutions out there that can help you that can help your children if they need to they offer often are another resource for people to get further information or have you know classes sometimes these institutions come into schools um, and can really help with more financial education but the one other thing we really wanted to touch on today was many of our young people are not banked and the younger generations are going with some of these fintech platforms so what am i talking about i'm talking about all the things we've heard of and i'm not singling anyone out but PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Cash App. These apps are, are being widely used by our younger generations. They're widely used within the disability community because sometimes they're easier and more accessible. Um, sometimes they're less accessible, it depends. But here's what I want to tell you all, anybody watching this today, the FinTech um, platforms are not all insured the way traditional financial institutions are. Banks are insured by the FDIC. We've probably heard that in a lot of commercial credit unions by the National Credit Union Administration. I would just say get some, you know, do some research on these platforms, all of them. They can be fine as maybe a pass through uh, where your money goes there, but then you transfer it to a bank account where it is insured at that institution, as opposed to leaving it sitting there in these apps and platforms where there it may not be a secured transaction or the money might not be insured if something happens and the company goes under. So um, I definitely wanted to I guess, alert everyone on that topic today. Uh, thank you, Becky. And and this guide, oh, this guide actually, we even we even set aside that information about comparing your options and banking. You know, try to give as much information as we can, and recognizing that that our um, children are going to be exposed to these things, and parents are, and some parents are using these fintechs. So we want, you know, we really thought it was important to address that. Well, even and then, I use oh, them. I'll I'll admit that I same. use them too. But I just use it more as a pass through because I think it's safer that way. And that you don't have to do you don't have to be like Becky. But at the same time, it, there is some research to be done to make sure any um, platform you're using the underlying financial institution under it may be insured, may not. Read up on your specific mm -hmm. institutions. Right. Right, because there are those apps where parents can set up chores and, and pay their child for those chores through them. There's one that I know even is starting an investment where the child can start investing. So that's, you know, definitely look at that, definitely investigate it. We just want parents to be aware that these are out there. And one of the things um, I do want to point out, you'll see, see the definition fintech. Throughout the guide, we do define certain terms because we want everybody to be on a level playing field. And we're not going to assume somebody knows what something means. Um, and you know, we want to make sure everybody has that information. Um, again, so now we're in our borrowing. Thank you, Becky. Now we're in borrowing. The, what I did here, and I apologize, there are a lot of words. This goes against everything I ever believed about doing a PowerPoint, but I wanted to compare and contrast the beginning of teachable moment, which is our seed, to the final teachable moment, which is the tree. And, and this is talking about borrowing. And it might be, you might think that's a hard concept to teach um, a four-year-old, 
but you could go to the, your parents can go to the library, take out a book or even a, a video. And when they get home on a paper calendar, circle the date that that book is due and explain to the, ch the child that if we don't return the book on the due date, we may have to pay a fee. And um, we also have to take very good care of that book. We have to be good stewards of the things that we borrow. Versus the tree, you would actually talk to your child about a real life loan that um, that you've either taken out or are contemplating taking out take it out and talk to them about how you have to pay that back, the cost of that, which would be interest, and then the other costs like fees if you uh, don't pay on time. There are some great resources online. There's one included here that you can see. And in the digital copy, that will be clickable. And it's a, a, it's a really uh, approachable way for kids to get in there and just just dabble with what is you know what happens if I only pay the minimum? How long is it going to take take for me to pay back that loan? And it's all automatic. And I even recommend having parents review a credit card statement at this tree level. You know, let let your children see what the cost is of of credit. And then Becky, I'm going to bring you back on because you are our identity theft expert. <laughs> Um, yes, and I believe I, your, some of your previous webinars are um, archived on your website, are they not? Because we did a long one on identity theft and scams probably about a year ago, um, but the information still holds true. Um, in this guide, we are looking at conversation starters, um, and we, we kept this one really simple and said, tell me about a video game or a website that you're using. What do you like about it? but just getting kids to open up about what they're doing online can really give us the in to then talk to them about online safety. Um, one of the things I always tell my son and any of my friends, sons and kids who will listen to me is never give out your social security number. And many of our kids may not know their social security numbers, but if they do learn it, they then they definitely need to understand that is the key to everything about them. That number needs to be protected and only given to mom, dad, grandma, trusted, um, obviously family um, in this, these situations. That is still the key to everything about you. Um, we want to make sure our kids are comfortable talking about, you know, people online if they encounter someone that makes them uncomfortable. Um, and again, identity theft is one step of someone stealing someone's identity and using it for their financial gain. The scams that are out there are pretty pretty similar and it, the end result is our kids or other people we love lose money. Um, and it's, it's a huge industry, unfortunately. The scammers are constantly coming up with new ways to steal identities and to scam people. The other old adage is, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So again, don't just go off and give money to your friends and, you know, um, again, give out personal information. This is just a huge issue and we can't do it justice in two minutes time, but right. we're trying to, again, give some conversation starters in this guide. And Becky, the financial educator in us, we could go on about this, right? This oh, is forever. a huge topic, right? <laughs> this is a huge topic for us. And I know we're getting close to, um, to the, you know, to three o'clock. So um, Susan is going to speak um, about IEPs, but before I take, you know, send it over to her, I do want to point out on this slide that you'll see, this is some of the verbiage. This is some of the content that we include after, um, these conversation starters. So parents have an idea of where we are going with this or what some of those responses might be, or maybe even a follow-up uh, question that you can ask your child. So Susan, I'm going to move it over to IEPs and I'm going to let you take that one. Great. Thank you. I also want to add, not just in the IEP section, but also in these other sections, you will see that um, in the book that we have parent resources again. So other websites that might be useful to you if you wanna delve more deeply, get more information. We also have other resource books. 
So in the IEP section, for example, um, we have we do a shout out to um, a website, a parent uh, website that provides help called A Day in Our Shoes by Lisa Leitner. We also have uh, used materials that other parents have shared with us that in Pennsylvania, for example, Batan, which um, is part of our Bureau of Special Education, um, to look at how to draft an effective IEP. So on the right-hand side of this slide, you'll see IEP gold formula. You know, Patan uses this, but also we saw it in speechandlanguagekids.com. So that what we're trying to do is say, families, money has a, a role for you. Um, it's value laden. We want to have make sure that parents and other family members are talking about money, helping teach your kids about how to be um, deal work with money. But share this also with your school and your teachers. So we want to be very concrete about how, in fact, can you have this crossover from family life to school life so that you can reinforce those concepts. So the first thing we did was we talk about how every IEP should include a vision statement. And that vision statement should be very child focused. So an example that we put in our book is, and you know, we wanna level the playing field, we wanna ground it so, that the back the background is understanding the differences between wants and needs helps you to develop a budget to manage your finances. This encourages savings and informs your daily spending choices. You know, make sure you cover all of your needs before you start spending money on your wants. So our vision statement that we put as an example is Lucy will be a tax paying citizen. She will live independently in the community with the supports that she needs, and she will have meaningful relationships with family members, coworkers, and friends. To work towards these goals, Lucy will be an active member of her school community, supported in her regular education classes, which include social studies and math, and participate in school activities with her peers, like the school store and plays. So that's our vision statement. And then we go right over to that IEP goals formula and give an example of how you can put in a, um, a time frame, the student Lucy, the setting measured by with what accuracy and what supports. So I'll give you another uh, real quick example. Lucy will be able to describe the difference between needs and wants and how these change over time using objects, pictures, and other materials from history and from today as observed in the classroom setting. Lucy will demonstrate this knowledge by sorting the materials into a category for needs and a category for wants and providing an explanation to the teacher as to the appropriate category 95% of the time. So see, we're really focusing on pictures and objects and really looking and having a discussion about wants and needs to the teacher's satisfaction 95% of the time. Another example would be by when, you know, by June 30th, when purchasing school supplies from the school store or food from the cafeteria, Lucy will be able to explain what a receipt is, the difference between a digital and a paper receipt, schools do it differently, why she needs a receipt, and how long to keep the receipt. Lucy will reconcile her purchases every month using an expense log as measured by the teacher with 90% accuracy with needed supports, including the use of a calculator and a file folder. 
So I hope um, these examples on this slide help ground you in looking at always a vision statement and then being very concrete as you help yourself and other families set up an IEP goal formula that will work for your child. And Karen, I hand it back to you. Thank you, Susan. We're almost done. And this is on this slide is an example of our suggested books and resources. And you're going to see that there are some books and we have an asterisk that's a parent tip in purple where you can actually go to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the CFPB, and get a parent reading guide. So you can read the book and then in that, in the CFPB parent guide, there are questions and, and activities that you can do to support the concepts in that, in that particular book. But these aren't the end all, these are not an um a exhaustive list. There are plenty of books out there, but these are books that we know and that we feel are really good resources to read with your child or have your child read to you. The next thing is, um, and this is actually from the earnings section, there are some great resources like the pacareerzone.org, really fabulous resource to look and, um, and have your child explore careers. And, um, and just even uh, a virtual, there's a thing called uh, Know-It-All, it's a virtual job exploration. And again, kids can um, can explore careers. And I'm really excited about this uh, is we also have a resource in this section about um, from MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And they have a free site. If your child if, is interested in coding or any kind of tech creating design, graphic, that sort of thing, this is a free site that kids can go in and start playing around with, with coding. It's well beyond my abilities, but, um, but most kids, I think, are, many kids are very interested in those types of things. Then this is, um, this is a, an example, and I, again, apologize for how much is on this slide, but but this will be our, this is an example of what our guide will look like. We want it to make it very easy to navigate. So it's very colorful. There's some white space. It's very obvious, you know, what the money topic we're talking about. You can see on the second page, um, there is, it's that sort of mint green and that's our section header. So parents can, you know, can say, if I want to tell my, talk to my children about borrowing, very easy to find the borrowing topic. Again, you know, these, the, the, the information under the topic are in that nice, big, bold, blue banner and lots of information. And the, I had talked about how, um, when Becky was talking about how we give information about comparing bank accounts, and that is in that sort of the light mint green box. So we think it's wonderfully laid out and we hope that it's easy for parents to use that. That's really the goal of this. As I said, I just wanna rem remind that this, this is, um, going to be made 501, 508, 501 are genes, 508 fully accessible. And, um, and then in the next month, we will have a print copy available. So, um, so you are really getting a sneak peek at what this is all about. And we are very excited to, to see the the print copy, the print version of this as well. And it will look to, if you've seen some of our other guides, it'll be the same sort of thing with nice heavy paper stock and real, you know, the, the binding that is, um, you can make the book lie flat. And then I just bring, this is the end. If we have questions, we can take them. And just, this is Becky's information. If I can get this slide to advance. There we go, Becky. And I'll just say, I didn't get to say this earlier, if anyone out there is looking for financial education for a group, um, this is what I do. And I definitely am uh, used to adapting classes for 
those with disabilities. So please reach out to me. Our services at um, Department of Banking and Securities are free. Um, and obviously I'm as well, well versed in the PATF materials as well. So uh, please do utilize us as a resource. Thank you, Karen and Susan for having me today and I'll say bye. <laughs> Thank you. And I just wanted to add one thing. Uh, Becky and I tried to answer all the questions in the Q&A. If you have other questions, we can stay on for a second and mm -hmm. answer more questions. So feel free to go ahead. Thank you guys so very much. This is Josie. Um, thank you for all of your info and for these resources. Um, and as Susan said, if you guys have questions, feel free to stay on. Um, I believe the thunderstorm is coming, so I'm jumping off. But thank you guys um, and have a good day. Bye everyone. And I'll put in a plug for Ray's. Make sure there's a survey, um, please complete it because that makes our uh, their presentations better and our presentations better. And again, we'll stay on if there are any additional questions. And I see lots in chat. Thank you. And lots of very good comments on the chat box on the question. Awesome. Something interesting about TikTok and mining. I confess I have no clue what that is, but I have, I suspect what it is. <laughs> so, yeah, very it, good. Is, it is. We felt it was really important to bring in that information about identity theft because kids are online pretty, pretty young. And um, and just, you know, how, how parents can talk to their child about being safe online. And there are some really great resources as well. Right. And Becky answered that question. She Perfect. would never do. <laughs> well, and that's me personally. That's not necessarily the Department of Banking and Securities opinion, but I personally would never gift money through TikTok. Um, they have proven that they are mining data, meaning they're trying to get as much data from other people to then do more knows what with. Um, so, uh, I know we can't necessarily ban TikTok like some people are trying to do, but I would never send money through TikTok or, you know, whatever. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> and we've talked about this, right, Becky, that I mean, there are, it's nice to have that ability to send money through some of those, ca those payment apps, but just really just be aware. And kids can get into those also online. So you just have to be very, you know, I know my seven-year-old granddaughter and my four-year-old grandson are very resourceful. So, um, you know, so they, and they're very intrigued with that credit card thing too. So. Well, seeing no more questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Josie for having us. And Johan, thank Johan, thank you. Have a great day.